So that means all of the head coaching vacancies are filled. And as we look to 2024, the Bears will face five of those teams with head coaches in their first year. The Seahawks, Titans, Panthers, Patriots, and Commanders. And we want to talk about that with our head coach, Dave Wanstead. Okay, coach, you're a big Jim Harbaugh guy, and there it is in the flesh, talking about looking up at his new quarterback and where, you know, just fired up to be with the Chargers. What's, what's your reaction when you see Jim back in the NFL? Oh, I think he looks so excited, as excited as he's been maybe since he's taken the Michigan job, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I, I think he knew the talent, obviously, that was on the squad when he took the job with, with Herbert and Allen and all the guys he mentioned. But when you get there in person and those guys sit down face to face with you and you can see the excitement in their eyes, uh, it, it's, it's got to be a great moment for Jim, really. And I, I would say, hey, AFC West, get ready division because it's they're going to be a much improved football team. I really believe that. Well, so that's the interesting part, right? You're going in the AFC West. You're going against Patrick Mahomes. Do you think he took the job because of Justin Herbert or just because he wanted to get back in the NFL? I think a combination, Mark, to be honest with you. I, I think, one, he wanted a, a situation where he could win. And being in college football, and, and obviously, you know, Oregon played, uh, you know, I think they played Ohio State. I don't know if Justin was, he was on the team. Man. I don't know if he played. Mark Mariota was there. But he knew him from college football. He knew all about him. He's watched him. Uh, so I think it was a combination of, one, it's a great job in L.A. Uh, that's dying for some, uh, some winning football. And now you got a quarterback, which is the most important position on the team in the NFL. Now you got a quarterback that's as good and talent wise as anybody in the league. Yeah. All right. So as we look at this head coaching cycle, the most glaring thing is the two guys that didn't get hired. Uh, Bill Belichick, yeah. uh, I think he's had some success in this game. Mike Vrabel's a big name, too, that was out there. What, what's your read? Let's start with Belichick. Why do you think he's still sitting it out? Well, I think that Bill probably went in, and a lot of these general managers and these owners, now they're young guys, and they want somebody that can grow with them. And, you know, every, everybody's optimistic that the guy they hire is going to be with them for 10 years, 20 years, uh, and win a lot of Super Bowls. And I, I don't, even though Bill would love to do that, I'm sure that people were interpreting, is he just in this thing to get that 14 or 16 wins? and get the record, you know, what is he really thinking down the road? And then on top of it, the stuff I'm hearing as much as anything is just uh, exactly what is he willing to give up as far as his, I, I hate using the word control, input with personnel, with all staff members. Uh, you know, Bill, Bill had control of everything in New England from who was cooking the food, to who was taping the ankles and, you know, some of these organizations, I know Atlanta, you know, they get some people there that have been with them a while and are good people. And I, I don't think at the end of the day, Rich McKay wanted to just make a household change. And that's a tough fit for Bill. It's a tough fit for the team. So that didn't surprise me. Vrabel shocked me. I thought Vrabel would be the first one being hired. Uh, young guy, played the game, won games, relates to players. That one is a true mystery to me. So, and look, maybe Bill gets in, maybe he does it. Just last one on him, Dave. Would you give him full control if you were an organization? You're in the wilderness. I don't know what I'm doing. Because he does some really odd things in the draft. You, you got to – I think you hit it, Mark. You know, if, if you're an owner or a personnel guy, you got to look at his draft record. I don't think since 2018 I read that he hasn't had a draft pick – be good enough with the Patriots to stay and sign the next extension contract after his rookie year. That's not very good. And so I, I think that if that's part of the equation that he wants to be, have, have personnel, major input, I think as an owner, you don't have to know anything about football, but you can look at, okay, over the past 10 years, you've drafted these guys. Now, how many of these guys are still playing for the Patriots? Not very many. 
It also gave a lot of the coaches getting hired. They're defensive guys. This used to be offense, 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 McVay, yeah. McVay. So now we're seeing defensive guys getting a shot at it. I don't know what your read is on that, but it's interesting. It, it's very interesting because when Vic Fangio got the job at Denver and then they let him go two years afterwards, they said the, the theme in the NFL at that time was, okay, that's it. We tried a great defensive coach. It didn't work out. We're going back to Sean McVay's of the world and Kyle Shanahan's. This did surprise me a little bit. Now, I love it being a defensive guy. I, I think they're just as worthy of it. But but I do think that uh, the message that's being sent is probably not being talked about. There's not a defensive coach, a good one, that I know that doesn't believe in the importance of running the football, how it helps your defense stay rested, how it takes plays off the time off the clock, uh, it eliminates the big negative plays, the interceptions, the sacks. So that tells me that these defensive coaches are going to hire a good offensive coordinator, but the run game is here to stay. It may even become a bigger part of what's going on in the NFL because of defensive-minded head coaches. I can hear you, Justin Fields fans out there right now, running game, our QB can do this, we can work in the new FL, NFL. All right, uh, interesting story with the Packers defensive coordinator job here. You're talking about a guy leaving being a head coach in college to be the Packers DC your read on that is this is it because coaching in college right now Dave NIL is just becoming the biggest headache I mean you've got a lot of experience with this as far as you know Miami and Dallas and the Bears yeah I I, I actually gave Jeff Halfley I know him very well I gave him his first job at Pitt he worked for me at Pitt uh, he was a graduate assistant I brought him on and I elevated him to secondary coach so I know Jeff very well I talked to him uh you know, I, I think the schools that are getting squeezed, and Boston College is a great university, no different than Pitt or Rutgers or, you know, I, I could go name them. They're not Penn State. They're not Clemson. They're not Florida State. Uh, and I think what's happening is you mentioned it. You said the NLL. I think they don't have the resources that these other schools do. Not many of them do. And some of you bring a kid in, you coach him, he's a – turns out to be a great player for you and then he transfers to one of these other schools uh i just believe that the the combination of all that if you're in a place where you don't feel and jeff Hafley was one of the best recruiters i had and i think if you're in a place where you don't feel like you're getting a fair shake recruiting these kids i think it can become frustrating and you know he was a secondary coach and he comes out of that ryan day he was with kyle shanahan Halfley was on the staff at Cleveland. So he's got some NFL ties with this whole LaFleur Shanahan connection. So uh, it doesn't surprise me that they would hire him. It did surprise me a little bit that he would leave Boston College, but I do understand. All right, one quick stop in Carolina. Dave Cannell's huge praise for Bryce Young. <laughs> I mean, he, he's, he, call, he's calling him generational coach. I mean, he did not have a generation. He, he, he doesn't hear. Let's actually hear the, the exact quote so you can react to it. Here, here, here's, here's, here's Coach Canellis. The more that I got ready for this interview and start watching Bryce, looking at my notes from his eval, I mean, that's just a year ago. You know, we're, we're evaluating him as a player, as a person. And with all the information that we could, I just got more and more fired up about the opportunity to have this amazing talent. And he's the guy. He's the right guy that you all that we all talk about when we have that quarterback, that that franchise, face of the franchise type of player. Um, and that got me really excited. Is that strategy or is that real? What's your read? Oh, I think it's real for him. Uh, you know, we all live in our own little worlds. I mean, uh, you know what? You can't deny if you're going to pull up last year's draft report, that's what you're going to read. Uh, if you pull up old draft reports on, uh, you know, I could name five quarterbacks. I won't. I don't want to embarrass them. That probably read just as good, but just never materialized in the NFL. Now, I hope Bryce Young does, and maybe Canellis can get it out of him. I mean, I hope all that stuff happens, but uh, uh, he's seeing that on film. I didn't see that this year. I, I don't know. I saw him throw the ball in the dirt and and not being able to run and get away from pressure. I, I didn't see that type of performance that he's 
he's so excited about on tape this year. Now, if I go back and read his college scouting report, I'm probably going to say those things. I think that's what he did. I mean, that would be incredibly sweet from a Bears standpoint. If all of a sudden he's great, but we got the one year that he was terrible, which got us the number one pick, which whatever the Bears are going <laughs> to do off it. Hey, Dave, last one here. You, you, you have been around the Bears for a long, long time now. Have you ever seen the fan base so at each other with what's going on with Justin Fields? Like, Cutler had, had a part of that, but it wasn't like this. This feels completely different, and I, I, I can't remember a time like this ever. Does anything jump to mind for you? No, you know, he, as a coach, I kind of feel the same way. I mean, I, I really respect Justin Fields. I think he's tough. I think he has the intangibles. Uh, I know the type of work ethic he has. I, there's a lot of strong feelings that I have for Justin, you know, but, you know, you got to take the next step, and I don't know if he can do it. I think that Caleb Williams, I talked to people back as far as Gonzaga High School, where he went to high school in D.C. He's a class guy. He's a smart guy. He's gonna. He's not going to do anything to screw this up. His value is only going to go up, up, up in the next three months. And I think it, all it's going to take is one or two quotes from him saying that he's always dreamt about playing for the Chicago Bears and Coach Hallis and on and on. And I think that fan base will not be as split as it is today. Yeah, I have three touchdown passes in game one. They'll be on their feet if that's the way the Bears go. Dave, always great to see you. Appreciate the time. All right, Mark. Good talking to you, buddy. Congrats. You finished the video. If you want to build on that success, download the NBC Sports Chicago app. It's got highlights, exclusive insights, and push alerts tailored to you. Everything you need to be a real Chicago sports fan. Download it now.